Hello and welcome to part two of topic two, magnetic and electric fields. Particular naturally occurring rocks have been known to have the ability to attract the element iron since about 600 BC. This rock was referred to as magnesian stone by the ancient people of Greece and Rome because the special rock was found near the former city of Magnesia in present day western Turkey. The knowledge of the iron attracting stone grew slowly but steadily. All magnets have two poles, a north and a south. This pair makes the magnets dipolar. Attraction and repulsion occurs as with electric fields. So that means that like repels like and opposites attract. Some elements have stronger magnetic properties than others. Groups 8, 9, and 10 make stronger magnets and are ferromagnetic. Examples of the, these metals are iron, nickel, and cobalt. Ferromagnetic materials make good magnets. They are made up of tiny magnetic domains that are all aligned together. Each magnetic domain acts like an individual magnet. Unmagnetized iron can have domains aligned and become strong magnets. How is that possible? By exposing it to strong external magnetic fields. If the north-south axes of all domains are aligned, so the north and south of all those little parcels of iron are aligned, a strong magnetic field results. Magnetic fields can be generated by the movement of electrons around a nucleus and the spinning of electrons around its axis. Electric current or electrons passing through a coil of wire, so that's an electromagnet. We will not be calculating magnetic field strength, but similar to gravitational and electric field strength, magnetic field strength decreases with distance, increases with strength of the magnet, but we will study the direction of a magnetic field. To determine the direction of a magnetic field line, we use a north test body to see which direction it will move. Magnetic field lines always move out of the north and into the south. Magnetic fields can also be generated by a current passing through a coil of wire. If, a given, if given a coil in the direction of the field labeled, similar to the one on the left to find the north south just look at where the field is coming out of so if it's coming out of one side and going into another the one that it's coming out of is the north side and the one that it is going into is the south if given a coil of wire without a field label where the current goes in is the south and where it goes out of is the north why does a compass always point north Earth's magnetic field is created by the movement of electrons in a core of wire. Remember, movement of electrons generates a current. This current is a magnetic field. Our compass needle is like our north test body since it always points north. Our north geographical pole is actually the magnetic south pole because north and south attract. Many organisms reply on or rely on Earth's magnetic field strength. Australian mud bacteria travel against magnetic field strength lines during drought to find water. They contain magnetic material in their cells. Birds rely on mag rely on magnetic fields and anomalies in local disturbances. In magnetic depressions, they sometimes fly in circles. So if there's a problem with the magnetic field or if there's like something that's disrupting it that we made, then the birds have trouble with their migration. Salmon use magne magnetoreceptors for directional 